Hey friends, I decided to start a seven episode experiment in creating audio only content. So I hope you enjoy. Please tell me what you think in the comments section or send me a DM. Riff number uh, three. What is the outcome that you're after in software testing? Uh, what are you trying to achieve? Can you explain your goals with clarity? So <laughs> basically that's, that's the question that we already discussed in the riff number one. But anyways, why are you testing? What are you aiming for when you test? I, I tend to ask this question in, in some conference talks or, or testing workshops and, and I get different kinds of answers like, yeah, well, well, our job is to assure the quality. We are a quality assurance. Or, well, our job is to hunt for the bugs. We, 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 we try to find bugs. That's what we do. Or some people say that, yeah, we have these acceptance tests and we need to run them. So that's what we do. Yeah, yeah, I know that's what you do, but what's the outcome that you are trying to find? What's the outcome you are searching for? That's the question. And I have this, this one key phrase that I would, I would love for you to remember. It is, it's the begin with the end in mind. Begin with the end in mind. So the first end is it's really, really interesting. I was, I was in a hardware store to try to find a, a drill, a power drill, because I, 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 I was like, I needed to drill some holes into my, my home's wall. And I was at the hardware store trying to find those. And there was this, uh, this beautiful, beautiful uh, sales representative that came to me and said, yeah, I can see that you're looking at the power drill. So, so what? What are you looking for exactly? What do you need? <laughs> and that, that was an interesting conversation that it sparked. Uh, I said that, I, well, I need a power drill because, you know, I need to drill some holes uh, at my home. And she asked me, what, what kind of a wall is it? So I said, it's a stone wall. That's, that's why it's a power drill. <laughs> so, so the conversation continued that, it, yeah, okay. Yeah, we have some great power drills, but, but can you tell me why do you need the um, wh wh why is it that you need the holes for? And I was like, yeah, well, <laughs> well, well, there is this shelf that I need to attach to the wall. And she had this great smile on her face, and, and I, I decided that okay, I have some time to have this discussion. So, <laughs> so the dis discussion went on, and she asked, okay, you need the shelf on the wall. Is it okay if I get a little bit of curious, curious here and, and ask you, why do you need the shelf on the wall? And I said that I actually have had like half a year, six months or something. I've had this huge pile of, of uh, great software testing books uh, that, that have been like in a pile on the floor and they are gathering dust there. So, so I need to get them like somehow organized and I want to get them onto the shelf. That's why I have the shelf. And she said, wow, that's wonderful. That's a great idea. Is there someone in your life who would love for you to, you know, fix this issue that the books are on the floors? And well, yeah, actually there is. So it would be wonderful if, if, you know, I could get the credit of actually accomplishing that, you know, that you know, renovation work or something like that. So, you know, I would get the credit. Um, it would benefit me a lot. And in addition to that, when I have the books on the shelf, it would make me feel great. Great about myself and I would feel accomplished. And I would feel that my study, the room where I work, that my study is it's in control. And then what she, what she said is, yeah, that's wonderful. Follow me. I have a great suggestion for you. This is like a Bosch power drill. And, and, and you have this, these awesome batteries that you can charge. And you can use these same batteries in different devices as well. If you ever need 
uh, Jigsaw or or, or 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 a Bush streamer or something like that. Bush soil. Uh, you can use the same batteries in every device that Boss has. So you might want to consider to have this kind of a device that will give you all the option and the control. <laughs> I was like, yeah, hell yeah, this is my device. I will buy it. Shut up and take my money. Uh, later on that day, when I had, you know, fixed the shelf on the wall, I started to think, you know, that's exactly the thing that we in software testing do as well. We only think about the immediate thing that's at our hand. We need a drill or we need a shelf. But asking the reason, what's the ultimate outcome that we are trying to achieve? So in software testing, I've learned to ask these uh, seven, five to seven layers of why questions from my peers, bosses and goal colleagues. And what they answer is, it's almost every time we come up with the same conclusion. People want to feel that they are in control. People want to feel assured. They want to feel at peace. That the product that they are developing is actually in great shape, or at least if it's not, they know about it in advance. So there will be no big surprises. So they want to feel confident and they want to feel in control. They want to feel safe. They want to feel certain. And that's what testing is here to deliver. That's why I always say people that when you begin testing, you need to begin with the end in mind. And now knowing this, different people get the same feeling of certainty, confidence in control from different kinds of outputs. And different businesses need different kinds of outputs to generate this exact outcome. For example, if you do exploratory testing and, <laughs> and uh, your colleagues have run all of the test cases and the test automation shows its screen. Everything is in control and everything is assured. Everything is perfect. Our pass rate of the software testing cases that we have, our acceptance tests is 98% and our release candidates is in perfect shape. Or that's at least what the metric says. And you as a test engineer decide that maybe it's a time to do a little bit of exploratory testing. And then you stumble upon a huge hairy showstopper. So what happens to that feeling of, of control and feeling of, of peace and certainty with the people who are actually looking at the acceptance test results? What happens to their feeling when you find a huge bug? You destroy it. You destroy their confidence in the product. So it's strange. Sometimes Software testers are expected to be able to deliver certainty, assurance, and at the same time, testers are expected to be able to find new hairy bugs, big hairy bugs that would destroy the confidence, destroy the, the sense of assurance. So testers are in a constant conflict with their work. So should I now be running more test cases to boost our sense of confidence, or should I now be hunting for new bugs to destroy the false sense of confidence, destroy the illusions that you have about the software? So begin with the end in mind. The end, what I'm aiming for here is when you test, you need to know exactly what you're trying to produce. So if your organization's peers, bosses, clients and colleagues, if your organization is expecting for you to deliver evidence that the product works the way it has been designed. What you need to be doing is exactly that. You need to be running more test cases to create great metrics as to evidence that it works. So why would an organization need evidence? Would be the next question. Well, for example, some organizations do business to business transactions. And when you have a requirement specifications that needs to be met in order for your company to have an opportunity to invoice the customer, then you need to be able to test 
with that end in mind, you need to be test with an end of producing evidence to back up your contracts. You need to be generating documents and evidence to back up the contracts so that you get the money from the client. So that's one possible end that you need to keep in mind when you test. And when you start testing, you need to come clean about the end that you're trying to meet now, today. Other possible end would be to actually try to find new problems, bugs, bottlenecks or risks, new information, something that we didn't know already. It would be to destroy the false sense of certainty that your clients, colleagues and bosses have. That kind of an end would need a totally different kind of approach into testing. For example, you could just say that, hey, give me the new candidate. I will close the door and have no test cases at hand, but I will set myself up here as I would be the user, the client, and see what I can find, see what I can feel, how the ap actual application feels, and what kind of a problems that I might encounter that we haven't taken into account yet. I might want to go out to explore the forest that's in front of me, you know, to explore the software and just to play around with it and see if something would fail. And that way you could be able to produce more bugs, find new bugs. So the end that we are having in mind is that we need to consistently be able to destroy the illusion that other people have about the software. We need to be able to reveal new problems, errors, bottlenecks, bugs from the software in order to make it actually good. So these might be two possible ends that you can keep in mind. Produce evidence that it works the way it was designed, or find new problems that would destroy the illusions that the evidence has created. Which one will you do today? Which one will you do in the testing session now? That's the question. So that was the riff number three. Topic was begin with the end in mind. Yay, that was the episode for today. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like, please still give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And I would appreciate if you tell me what you think in the comment section or please DM me if you feel like it. Take care. Bye bye.